welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again for, yes, another installment of my 2023 Retro October Fox Kids Countdown event, and I'm very excited because we have the entire first wave of the new McFarlane Toys Batman, the animated series, Target Store exclusive toy line. This is bringing back all the old DC Direct, DC Collectibles, Batman, the animated series figures, with a little bit of a new paint job, also a collect-to-build figure element, which is interesting. Batman, of course, being the first figure in the wave. And like I said, yes, we are building the Condiment King. Good old Buddy Standler. That is very cool, I have to say. Also, McFarlane Toys, your name, the logo. I mean, I get that you're making the figures, of course. We get it in conjunction with DC Direct, but... It's a little much, right? McFarlane Toys is literally on this box about eight, nine times, right? It's kind of funny. We get it. You're making the figures. But I got to say, the old school artwork is superb. I love the box art. I love the boxes in general. And just everything about it screams Batman the Animated Series. And for that alone, I appreciate it. You get to see the Condiment King, and you get to see all four characters that make up the first wave. And if you're wondering, here's the barcode as well. And yes, they spelled Builda wrong on the back. That's kind of funny, right? Now, figure number two is any good Batman needs a good Robin. Dick Grayson makes his Wave 1 debut, which again, in case you were wondering, yes, these are all reissues, retreads of the original DC Direct, DC Collectibles figures, right? And if you haven't noticed already, they got a little bit of a cell shading thing going on. Mr. Freeze looking top notch, I will say. Nice to have Victor Freeze, a, a villain, kind of, sort of, in the whole Batman the Animated Series lore. More of a anti-hero, kind of, sort of deal. You get the idea. But here's the old barcode for Mr. Freeze. But... We have the true master of fear, and the one that I am most excited for in this line, if we're being honest. We have Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. the Scarecrow. I always love that. This is his second incarnation, which the first one had the bag head. This one I actually really like. And then you had the new Batman Adventures with the whole hangman noose kind of deal. And there is also a platinum variant for this Scarecrow. Shout out to Orange the Titan for finding it originally. Uh, it's more supposed to be in his Batman Adventures comics look. So I'm definitely on the lookout for that one. That one will definitely be mine. And of course, with any good wave of figures, yeah, you're going to definitely need a vehicle to go with it. So McFarlane Toys is bringing back the Bat Cycle with a little bit of a different paint job, of course. Again, just to bring up the packaging, that is so cool. That's just taking me back to the Kenner days, right? They even have trading cards. More on that in just a few. This features a light-up effect, a smoke effect, quote-unquote. Kind of means something different once I show you. The Bat Cycle on the box. You get the idea. Nice window box packaging. And on the back side, you get to see everything and anything that it does. So it lights up. It's got the tail lights. I'll show you everything. Fits most of these Batman animated figures, kind of, sort of. And you get to see it in action from the animated series along with how to replace the batteries. In case you need that, here is the barcode for said Bat Cycle. Now, I grabbed all these from my Target store. They originally told me, no, we don't have it. I took a walk around the toy aisle. Lo and behold, they were on a side end cap. So just keep your eyes peeled. And then hopefully fairly soon, we will see these pop up again on the Target app so you can order. I'll put links down in the description below just in case they go back up. But in the meantime, we're going to sit back. We're going to relax. We're going to grab ourselves a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the entire first wave of the brand new McFarlane Toys XDC Direct Batman the Animated Series Returns. And while I got all you Paul Dini's and Bruce Timms here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my DC Multiverse videos. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Like Batman the Animated Series, right? Man, it's good to see these. I never collected them. I never got into them. I had everything from Kenner to Hasbro to Mattel, Justice League Unlimited, you name it. And life was just happening when these came out. I never got into the line. So 
I am actually very happy that we're getting these back, especially since we got these really cool trading cards, which totally reminds me of my Topps Batman the Animated Series trading cards, along with the trading card that came with the Killer Croc issue of Batman Adventures number seven. But they are just amazing. Again, all the artwork works so well to bring back the nostalgia, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm heavily enjoying all of this. There's even one for the Bat Cycle. So Scarecrow, Robin, Batman, Mr. Freeze, they're all there. You can collect them all. You can read the backs, gives you the bio. These are definitely going into my card carry case. That's for sure. I do like these trading cards. Those are awesome. So you got all the figures. You got all the accessories. We'll kick it off with Mr. Freeze because he comes with his Freeze tank, right? It's fairly simplistic. Got a little bent right there at the top of the little diode. And you can see a little bit of the paint smear from the little peg which goes into his back. Now, the freeze gun is very cool. Now, it's all one color, of course. It looks like you could put a freeze element at the tip right there, right? If you wanted to. But a little cell shading would have gone a long way for this one. I'll tell you what. Now, he comes with a ton of hands. Like... A ton of hands, Super 7 style, we'll just say. And there's really uh, nothing else for him to do with these hands unless you want to get creative. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, you'll have enough hands for this guy. And of course, Mr. Freeze himself, which, hold on one second, we need to put the tank on the back. We got to do this proper and then we got to get the gun going in his hand. Make sure you got the right hand equipped, right? Eh, some of them, they can go either which way, but this one definitely works. Mr. Freeze looks awesome. This is a fantastic looking, well done, well cell shaded figure. That's going to be a point of contention coming up in this video. I'm just going to tell you that. There's no cell shading on the purple, but Everything else is very stylish, and it utilizes the cell shading perfectly. This is a fantastic-looking Mr. Freeze. Scale-wise, that's another thing, but I digress. I'm very happy with the way that this looks. This is every bit the Batman the Animated Series Mr. Freeze figure that I wanted. The dome comes off. You can have it on. You can have it off. You can see his cold, bald-headedness in all its glory with the red goggles and everything else. Very Mike Mignola, right? Wink, wink. But yes, this is awesome. I absolutely love the way that this figure came out. It's such a display piece. Now, I want to point out... If you are one of those people, one of those collectors that love articulation, this may not be the figure, may not be the line for you. And while he does have his arms, he will not have much in the way of an elbow, but he will spin and he can get his arm up to utilize his freeze gun, right? So I do like that, but no, not much going on at the elbows, if at anything, not much going on at the waist, if at anything. And the legs, the articulation is very antiquated. Again, they're reissuing figures from up to around 9, 10 years ago, right? Just about. But he does have peg holes, the feet, the boots, everything rocks, everything moves. Mr. Freeze is really one of those characters that just stands there. And he has enough articulation to do all the Mr. Freeze things. So in that sense, yes, that's cool. However, with the amount of hands that you get... I would like to see in the future more episode-specific accessories, like a chicken soup can, right? That would have been a nice touch. Now, to continue on, let's go with Robin. Now, Robin comes with his bolo launcher thing, whatever this is supposed to be, a rope. <laughs> Doesn't really do much for me, I'm just going to say. Now, he does have plenty of hands, much like Mr. Freeze, including one of my favorites, with the molded-in bat grapnel. Totally appreciate that. All the other ones, well-suited as well. Robin, though, himself, I'm going to be very honest here, is very lackluster, and he's very much a disappointment, right? I have the original DC Direct, DC Collectibles Robin. I will show you a comparison of that. But this one is just so, man, you missed the boat on this. There's no yellow underneath the cape. He's more Ninja Robin, like the old Kenner figure. But I'm not giving you credit there. You goof the cape. Let's just go with that. The cell shading is a whole other issue, right? I do like cell shading when it's done properly. Is it done properly here? No, they got things to work on. This is Hasbro level of cell shading 
let's be honest. Some of it works. Like, I like what they did on the boots, right? I don't mind the green cell shading, but the cell shading on the face looks like mustard got smeared on him. It's not a proper cell shading for skin tone, right? The rest I can forgive, in all honesty. I don't really mind it all too much, but in totality, no, it's not done well at all, and they really need to work on that or change the whole dynamic and just let it be, right? But if anything, I would stay away from the skin. <laughs> we'll just say that. Also, there is some issues when you want to articulate them, especially around the crotch. It causes stress marks within the red of the plastic. Just as a heads up, kind of makes me not want to move this guy around, which is a bummer. It's the whole point of having this much articulation. He doesn't have peggles on the bottom of his feet either, which that's where the original DC Collectibles DC Stands came in, right? To help him stay aloft. So, yes, there are plenty of issues for this figure, and it's really about building the Condiment King, I have to say. Now, to go from yeah to yeah, right, we have the Scarecrow and his scythe. And that's some beautiful cell shading right there on said scythe, right? From the episode trial, you could say. But if we're being honest, the cell shading should have been on both sides because technically it's on the wrong side. I'm nitpicking, I know, but if you go in correspondence with the show, it's on the wrong side. But it is well done, so I appreciate that. Now, he does come with several hands. He's got the fear toxin spray in hands. He's got a fisted hand, and he has a weapon holding hand. So four in totality, and I wish that he had an extra weapon holding hand, I'll just say. He does come with the unmasked Jonathan Crane head. Totally appreciate that. This does have some cell shading on it, which doesn't look too shabby. Kind of makes him look like he has a little soul patch. But again, let's stay away from the flesh tone because this scarecrow is just nuts. It's awesome. I love it. I'm so happy to have this version. This is my favorite version of the three versions of Scarecrow in the totality of Batman the Animated Series and the New Adventures, right? From his hat to his straw hair, the face, the red, everything is very cool. And if you hadn't noticed, yes, he does have cell shading to him, but this works. Much like Mr. Freeze, the villains actually made out the best, right? As you'll soon find out, Batman being the worst. But yeah, the cell shading does work because it's not too heavy handed. It works with the angles of this figure. And for that, I appreciate it. So in that sense, yes, more of this type of style of cell shading, a little goes a long way with cell shading, right? I'm just going to point that out. Too heavy, looks gross it looks wrong it looks weird very light very poignant parts with the cell shading yes that works and again like i brought up with the articulation if you're a stickler for articulation you may have a hard time getting this guy to stand up he's very wonky he's very awkward he's very much a scarecrow and yes i wish that he had two weapon holding hands and they fixed that from the original release batman now, we got to talk about Batman here, right? Of course, old Batman, right? So he comes with the Bat Grapnel. He gets a standalone one. He also comes with the Batarang, both are which very suited for the amount of hands that this Batman has. So he does have the whole Bat Cycle gripping hands, so you can use this Batman with the Bat Cycle. That's great. He has the battering holding hands, and he also has a bat grapnel molded into one of the hands. So all the hands are great. No problems whatsoever with the hands. The Batman, he's very awkward looking, I'm just going to say, right? Now again, this is the reissue of the Batman that came with the Bat Cycle some years back. The cell shading, or whatever you want to call this on this Batman, is just a complete misfire and i'm not a huge fan of the bat symbol i know that's the exact figure but the face portrait the head portrait again with the cell shading on the face it just doesn't work i do like the belts i'll give them that and i like the way they finally painted the tights here on the lower half of his bat underoos they're a lot lower and that fits a lot better i'll show you more on that in just a few i do like the blue on the black gloves and the boots the cape the cowl everything looks great this cape, though, all I can say is I'm glad it's blue on one side. 
black on the other because this again is just bleh. it does not work it's not a great feeling cape it's stitched in there i don't think it works at all i get it the original one had some bendy wire in there you could form fit it and make it look like it's flowing off the back of the bat cycle the ab crunch will help him fit better on the bat cycle so in that sense i don't mind it but again there are little things that i wish they could have gone back and fixed little tweaks here and there that really would have made this version of Batman pop. Go really easy with the legs too. They were a little stiff right out of the packaging. Once you move them around, you get them going. They didn't get loose or anything like that. But yes, watch out for some stiff joints here and there. Nothing I had to heat up. And you get the feet and you get the boots. He's a lot more articulated. He is an articulated Batman. For those of you looking for that sort of thing within this animated universe. But I think the thing that they knocked out of the park is the head portrait. I think that's a great looking Batman the Animated Series, Batman head portrait. Everything else, yeah, no, not so much. And then of course, you're gonna wanna get all four figures to build the brand new figure, never released, Condiment King. And like I said, this is Buddy Standler, if you're not familiar. He's not really a villain. He's a guy that was controlled by the Joker using Mad Hatter technology. But man, oh man, did they nail this, right? Well, for the most part, they nailed it. You got his ketchup, you got his mustard, and I love that they use strings. That is so Kenner. I absolutely love that they did that. That is fantastic, but I don't love that they didn't paint the mustard packets and they didn't paint the ketchup packets. That's supposed to be red. The other side is supposed to be yellow. What happened? Even the artwork has that on there. Come on, it's this attention to detail that we need in these types of figures for these price points, right? But everything else is pretty darn cool. I do like the cell shading on this guy. You got peg holes, thank God. I'll show you the reason why in just a few. The big tanks, he's got the pickle hats. The legs, and this is the bummer, is incredibly loose, like stupid loose. And he is going to be just a pain to stand. Not only is he back heavy because of the tanks, but they are so loose. It's like a figure you bought 30 years ago from Kenner, and now you're at this point. McFarlane, after all the loose joints, all the misfitting pieces, everything else, I'm going to ask that you somehow reissue the lower half with the legs for this guy. And I'm being honest, it's incredibly loose. It's not even funny at this point. And this is a figure a lot of people wanted, including myself. You really got to do something here. After this 2023 year, somehow, some way, you got to find a way to get us fans a, a lower half that just isn't so dang loose. I mean, look at the waist. He's sliding all over the place. That aside, the ketchup gun, the mustard gun, the fact they're on strings, everything else, it's fantastic. So again, it's like five steps forward, 10 steps back. Because of the loose joints. This guy could have been so good. You got to put a little bit more into this. Because that's one heck of a sculpt right there. Utilize it. Paint him up. And make sure those joints aren't loose. Now like I said. You got a vehicle. You got the reissue of the Bat Cycle. Comes with the helmeted Batman head. And there you go. You got the whole helmet for old Bruce Wayne Batman. When he's driving around trying to hunt down Man Bat. And whoever else, right? But look at the color of the face. And just to show you, you got a very tan Batman and you got a very muted color. It doesn't match, right? You got to work on the colors. There are elements to this first wave that are truly driving me batty. But I got to say, I absolutely love what they did here with the Bat Cycle. I don't mind this color scheme. I know it's not show accurate, but it's Kenner accurate. It very much is me having fun with this new line and I appreciate it very much for that and those of you who got the original bat cycle don't have anything to worry about it's very different you got wheels that turn and move from the back to the front everything looks good and I appreciate it for its simplicity especially on the bottom you have a little button you're going to want to pull this little tab out and when you push said button that will activate the lights and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off the lights in my review station all proper so you can see it light up and do its thing. And there you go. Everything from the front to the dashboard, the light by the seats, and the backlight. It all lights up. It all looks great. And it really makes for not only a great display, but a very accurate Batman the Animated Series Bat Cycle. You even get a base with a little rotating and how they're billing it. 
it's like a smoke effect. Well, kind of, sort of. You can remove the smoke effect if you don't want to have that. You can even flip this over for a little bit of a different flat surface with a manhole cover, right? So again, you can have it to where the smoke effect is coming off the tire, or you can have it to where you don't have it. It's up to you. Choose your own adventure, but I will say that it works really well together. The electronics, the display, the figure on top, which I'll show you in just a second, but I love this overall. This is a great way to integrate the figures and the vehicles and I totally appreciate it. And uh, you can flip it. And you got different ways of showing this off. And you can really rock the bat cycle to and fro. If you want to kind of have it skidding, you want it upright, it really works for you. You have to turn the button on and off, just as an FYI. Now, with Batman, you go ahead, you remove the head, you fit the helmeted head onto him, just like so, which fits really well. I think it looks good on him, minus the awkward what you can see of his face, right? The face paint. Get him more into that seated position. Again, go really easy with the legs at first, just to really kind of see how everything works, right? Get him kind of crunching. Once you get him on the bike, you can figure it out. Toss him onto the bike, and there you go. That actually looks really good. And I will say this, the cell shading aside from what I said, once he's on the bat bike, you kind of forget about that. And that could be an element where if you're not as critical... You could get this figure, get this bat bike, and never think about that cell shading again because you really don't see it, and it works well all together. But as the figure standalone, no, it, it really doesn't look good, and I hope that they really take their time and look at Wave 2 and make it work. I love that he can roll around. You can really have some Kenner nostalgic fun with it being 2023. Again, I'm so happy that they reissued all this because I missed it the first go-around. And they're expensive now. Let's just say that. The one thing I want to point out, though, and this is a weird dichotomy because these are reissued figures minus the Condiment King. But the Condiment King is huge compared to all the other figures where he should be shorter than Batman. Of course, Robin should be around Scarecrow's height. Mr. Freeze should be taller than Batman. You get the idea. So that's really on DC Direct's. I do wish that McFarlane Toys could have figured out a way to maybe fix that somehow, some way. That would have been insanely complicated, I know, but it seems to fit with the whole multiverse motif, right? We all know about the size comparisons there when it comes to Batman and Robin. Now, I don't have very many old school of the DC Direct original releases, right? But I have the four-pack Walmart exclusive Batman and how he compares to the Bat Cycle Batman now. Not a fan of that head portrait, but I really like the new Bat Cycle one, right? Not a fan of the ab crunch either, so it's kind of like a mishigash of things. With Robin, he had a much brighter green. He had the proper yellow under the cape. The cell shading one, it's honestly, it's a total pass if you have the previous Robin or if you want to build the Condiment King. However, you can swap the heads of the Batmans and minus the cell shading on the side of his face... That's a pretty stellar Batman. Also, you can give one of the capes from your previous Robin to the cell shaded Robin, just to show you what that would look like. And also, you could put the helmeted head on that particular Batman as well and put him with the Bat Cycle. But what I have to say, what makes me really happy, all thoughts aside, is that going from Kenner to now missing the DC Direct and having McFarlane re release these figures, I'm very happy with starting this collection. I really like to see the progression of all these old toys, what I've loved to have seen as a kid, right? It's everything kind of come true, even down to the Bat Cycle. It couldn't take the Batman off the Bat Cycle. Remember that? I sure do. <laughs> and also, like I stated, this is very much a retread to the original Fox Kids Saturday morning lineup, right? From Spider-Man the Animated Series to X-Men to Power Rangers. This is a lot of fun. So, that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new first wave of the McFarlane Toys XDC Direct Batman the Animated Series Returns. And like I said, these are starting to hit Target store shelves now. That's where I picked mine up. I am really on the lookout for that Platinum Scarecrow. So if any of you out there find it, uh, let me know, of course. I have my friends on the search, so I very much appreciate them. There are some hiccups 
for this first wave. Let's be honest. The cell shading is going to divide people. Some of it I like. Some of it I don't. Some of it I wish they would really take an artist's eye and go, mm, let's kind of figure this out. And uh, I'm excited to see what they do for wave two. I think, uh, I think people will be stoked, right, if Toy Fair is any inclination. But you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Batman the Animated Series. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, get that cell shading under control, and I think you might have a winner on your hands. So when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.